you, you, you registered. You can as well go online and go to the INEC portal to check your collection center with just your state, your name and the state where you register. But what is the situation in the PVC collection points across Nigeria? Let's quickly see uh, this short uh, video of some persons complaining and those commending the process. People are coming out gradually by gradually. They are coming out to come and collect it. No, wala, no anything. You are collected with peace. It's very, very easy since the day, the first day they have started. People are becoming, you receive your photos card without the sleep. They will not give you. I've been starting to process this last year and I actually did everything online. So they asked me to come here, like they asked me to come here and finish the processing. But for me getting here and they told me again that I should go to Agugu to go and process everything. But to me, in my own experience, I would say this is really good. Like, you know, for every, like, every of my mates out there, you know, they should just try their best and get this permanent voter's card. Because to me, I would say this is the only thing or the best voice of us we youth that we can say, okay, fine, we can just try our best and, you know, elect our own president or any governor of our own choice. Maybe when the went to go and register their photos card. Maybe the person that uh, attends to them. Maybe you make some mistake in the card or in the place. That's why you can't find their photos card. Just want to advise them that they should, they should come and collect and some that they didn't find their own uh, photos card. Maybe they should went back. It's quite difficult a bit because um, the this work is quite is taxi and it needs like division of labor. But there are few people assigned here. And another thing we've been standing, my, I came with my aged dad. I had to I had to follow him because I know it would be this stressful. There's no seat to there's no chair to sit. There's no canopy. Thank God for nature. That's why we have these trees. That's the only shield and that's the only we could just rest on cars. If I some some owners were like, don't rest on my car, don't do So that's, that's just, it. but we feel like it is, it is needful to collect our PVC and then to exercise our right and vote. That's why we are to. But if they can assign more people for this, you know, sorting out names by, I think by unit, I don't know how they are, they are distributing it actually, but it would be better if there are more people assigned to it. The truth untold. We restore democracy. We initiated due process. We created the EFCC and ICPC. We brought Nigeria out of debt by achieving $18 billion worth of relief and $30 billion overall reduction. We revived the rail system. We upgraded agriculture. We brought in the mobile phone and digitalized Nigeria. Under the PDP, the Nigerian economy was the strongest in Africa. Though Nigerians made their choice, today we all know better. Hmm. Nigerians do not despair. Hope is in the horizon. We are putting in the work in refreshing our drive to rescue and rebuild Nigeria. Together, let's make it happen. PDP. Power to the people. And moving on to our focus for tonight. On Thursday, the Independent National Electric Commission, uh, INEC, presented the voter register for the 2023 general elections to the 18 political parties. INEC chairman said the register has uh, 93,469,008 voters in it, and uh, the highest in the country since the beginning of electoral contests. As a further affirmation of the Commission's readiness to conduct the 2023 general election as scheduled, the final register of voters, as I said earlier, has been compiled. You will recall that for the 2019 general election, Nigeria had a voter population of 84,004,084. After the cleaning up of the data from the last continuous voter registration exercise, held between June 2021 and July 2022, 9,518,188 new voters were added to the previous register, resulting in the preliminary register 
of 93,522,272, which was presented to Nigerians for claims and objections as required by law. At the end of the period for claims and objections by citizens, the Commission received 53,264 objections from Nigerians to the prevalence of ineligible persons on the register by virtue of age, citizenship, or death. These names have been verified and they have been removed from the register of voters. Consequently, the register of voters for the 2023 general election stands at 93 million 469,008 voters. Of this cumulative figure, 49,054,162, or 52.5 percent, are male, while 44,414,846 representing 47.5 percent are female. The distribution by age group shows that 37,060,339 or 39.65% are youth between the ages of 18 and 34. 33,413,591 representing 35.75% are middle-aged persons between the ages of 35 and 49. 17,700,270, representing 18.94%, are elderly voters between the ages of 50 and 69, while 5,294,748, representing 5.66%, are senior citizens aged 70 and above. In terms of occupational distribution, Students constitute the largest category with 26,027,481 voters, representing 27.8% of the total, followed by 14,742,554, or 15.8%, farmers and fishermen, and 13,6939 representing 13.9% are housewives. The data on disability was not collected for previous registration. However, the cumulative figure of 85,362 persons from the recent CVR indicates that there are 21,150, representing 24.5% persons with albinism. 13,000 387 representing 15.7% with physical impediment and 8,103 representing 9.5% are blind. Well, uh, you can see the explanation from uh, the INEC uh, chairman there, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, on the register that was released on Wednesday. And this leads us to our focus on the program tonight. As usual, uh, we are having the 2023 election data dashboard. And our focus is on the just released voter register for INEC, the 2023 voter register. But tonight, we'll not just be looking at uh, the figures and uh, uh, how they were spread, uh, how they've been spread to each state regions even up to polling units but what we are looking at today is uh, comparing the figure with what we had in 2011 2015 2019 and then do a pro doing a projection to what we may be expecting in the next uh, election we remember and recall that this voter register that INEC has just announced is not the number of those who have collected their pvc but rather number of those that have registered our data on the program tonight is generated by our own partners, Kimpact Development Initiative. And, uh, uh, you know, my regular co-host is not around today, so <laughs> he has de decided to send someone. And I have joining me in the studio to do analysis on the data 
is Oluwa Femi Adebayo. Oluwa Femi is uh, the Senior Program Manager, Kim Pact Development Initiative. Thank you so much, Femi, for coming. Thank you, Joma. Thank we you for having me. Thank you. Yes, what are we looking at today? Um, we'll be looking at the registered voter as released by Heineck. Mm. Just like you said, we will be comparing with past figures from 2015, 2019, to look at it, disaggregate to age. We look at the component of the young persons. There have been a lot of, you know, um, thought or, 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 you know, school of thought as regards young people. We look at what the young persons, the composition of the young persons. We look at the, of course, occupational distribution. Let's mm. see, maybe we have more of housewives, maybe we have more of students and, and the likes. And um, of course, we'll be looking at it from the senatorial um, geopolitical zone perspective to look at um, a whole lot of this figure as we move into this, I know. It's so how did you get, how did you come about this data? Okay, so this um, data uh, that I've that are gotten from Heineck. Um, Heineck released the 2023 field uh, just yesterday. And um, for the 2015, 2019, Heineck also usually have a report um, after every of the elections. So we, we got this data from there. And what we've been able to do is to um, um, literally um, visualize, disaggregate, mm. and doing a lot as regards this. So um, this is what we have on the dashboard for registered voters. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what we will be looking at um, uh, as we uh, move ahead to do our election data dashboard, analyzing uh, the figures and what you'll be expecting. But the final figure that we will use at the before the e before the election will be the figure of um, collected uh, voters' card because with the 2022. Uh, uh, electoral act, they no longer use uh, the registered voters for margin of leads, but rather the 2022 electoral act has uh, made it very easy that they will only use a credit number of accredited voters on the day of elec election to do the margin of leads. And they were not alone tonight on this uh, program. We have an analyst from the civil society community in the studio with us. Kenneth Eze is with us. Ken is the executive director, Speak Out Africa Initiative. Thank you so much, Ken, for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. Sure, I'm sure you've collected your permanent voter no, scan. Or I you had, registered I before now. Long be, 2011. Oh, it's far beyond the 11. I've been voting. Wow, that's good. Yes, I've been voting. Thank before, you so much. So Welcome. Thank so, you. Femi, let's get down to business. Um, looking at the dashboard, what I'm seeing here is, um, mm, first of all, we, we look at from 1999, Yes. this uh, uh, Fourth Republic, Lanto 2023, the yes. number of uh, uh, voters that we have. So we, we are now concentrating on, are we going to look at the figure? First of all, you know, before we go to 2023, yeah. there's something I noticed. Between 1999 to 2007, when we didn't... Uh, have to use uh, the computer or the, the technology, electronic means, ele yeah. electronic means. The margin was very slim. Imagine 59, 57 million in 1999. Yeah, that's right. And then in 2003, we're having 60 million yeah. uh, and some figures. That's about uh, three, million, three, 3 million difference. Yeah. And between 2003 to 2007, with what I'm seeing here is 61 million. So that means just one, one million Nigerians registered. Yes, yes. Um, um, you know, if you, like you rightly said, um, if we look at um, what technology we're also bringing into the, the system, it's, it's very important for us to note that, actually. Uh, because if you look at 27, 2011, for someone like me, I got registered between, um, as a voter, between okay. this period, right? Okay. To be able to vote for, you know, and it was through electronic means. So it's also the targetry, because if, let's, let's just come to 2023. Uh, if you look at the percentage increase between 2019 to 2023, is about 11.8 thereabout. Mm. And if you look at also, um, 2015 to 2019, it's over 20 percent in percentage increase. Mm. But of course, we know something happened between 2011 and 2015, mm. right, which has to do with um, cleaning up of the register yes. uh, for a bit of time. And um, I think that got to about uh, 53, 53 million. About 15 million was removed. Yes, was, was removed. removed but by the, the time register. the CVR was done, it also moved up to 69, oh, sorry, 67 million as we uh, and, right and I think this was when uh, they had to do the voter registration exercise using the uh, data capturing machine. Yes. So yes. Th they introduced uh, the uh, what they call it card reader. Yes, and all into the system. Into the yes. system. So if you do not have a permanent voter card, you may not be able to vote. So that that I think I'm sure 
that uh, gave room to the figure between 2015 to Th 2019. That's, that's right. And yes. um, we also need to acknowledge the fact that the technology over the years has also improved. Okay. Um, which technically also make the process, uh, you know, in terms of being seamless. And don't, we shouldn't forget also that at this point, the old registration was, you know, uh, should I d disaggregate it? Yes. If, I'm, if, I'm, uh, if I'm going to use that word, because you start the process online, then you go to the uh, um, HINEC um, designated area or offices to complete your registration, your registration, the biometrics. So I think one key thing in the, on this register is for us to also know that the use of technology over time has helped in getting more persons to be on the register mm. okay so technology has actually improved uh, uh, a number of voters on the register yes uh, but that's that's not all we also need to also take a look at um, uh, voter apathy too too because when you have this figure and at the end of the day 30 percent of Nigerians will be will not even come out to vote so <laughs> they are important <laughs> but let's concentrate solely let's take a look at 2023 elections because that's where everybody's attention is at this moment. Yeah. So let's let's go to 2023 elections. Because uh, yes, good. So we're looking at it from each geopolitical zone. And um, if we take a look at what is here now, this is the South South region yeah. of Nigeria. The South South region in 2023 has about uh, 14 million four hundred. Yeah, at the moment, yeah, 14 moment million. Yeah. For the, for those that will go into the election in 2023. Yes. This is those registered. Not those that collected not PVC. Collected so PVCs. we we don't have that figure yet. Uh, but what we have right is um, registered voter. But if you look at it from, if you look at every of this zone, I think to make it easy for uh, viewers at home, um, let's look at 2023. And okay. um, the northwest is the highest on the register in terms of the geopolitical zone, followed by southwest. Um, we have the north central, you know, like that till we get to the southeast. the southeast. This is the same pattern across from 2015, if you look at it, the same pattern. And 2019, the same pattern. And 2023, the, the same, same pattern. pattern. So it has not changed in pattern. No, so the regions, the regions are still the same position that they have been since uh, 20, even 2011. Yes. It's been the same position. So it has always been the Southwest with the highest number of registered voters. Northwest. I mean, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Northwest with the highest number yes, of registered yes. voters. Where we have the three Ks. K, K, K. Yes. We have the Kano. We have Kasina. Kastina, we have Kaduna. Kaduna. <laughs> so the Northwest has always been uh, the highest uh, in registered uh, voters. Followed by this, the Southwest. The Southwest, yeah. Uh, Lagos is there. Uh, you know, Lagos with uh, the recent data shows that Lagos has about 7 million registered voters from 2020, 20, yeah, in the recent data, Lagos yeah. has about 7 million registered voters. If, if, if we look at it, um, if we look at, this is Lagos. Of course. If you look at Lagos, so of Lagos course. has seven. Seven, seven million <laughs> seven registered, million. registered voters uh, in, in the Southwest, in, in the entire region, after uh, the Northwest, it's uh, the Southwest, and the, the, the population of registered voters from Lagos State uh, gave it to them. Because if you look at it, seven, uh, in 2019, 6 million, in 2015, uh, 5 million. So w Lagos has the highest number of registered voters in the Southwest. But who are those that, 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 that you're thinking made up that uh, uh, number? Um, well, you know, w when we look at Lagos as um, the demography in Lagos, we know that uh, we have of course, young people. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, they talk about the fact that um, going to Lagos, you know, um, rural urban migration. We need to speak about that. And in the southwest, obviously, uh, we have most of the young people living. Uh, let me use the word peri-urban areas. Mm. Move to Lagos, and they call it hustling, <laughs> right? And um, we cannot also shy away from the fact that um, when we look at Lagos. Obviously, uh, a once capital city of Nigeria, yes. uh, where the commercial activities go on and Business on. Yes, it's um, still the commercial nerve of the country. Yeah, so we, we can't um, also uh, absolutely say they are young persons. We also have middle age individuals that are working actively. And um, sometimes ago, you know, we were talking about Lagos as, as a, a, a state in Nigeria. Mm. And we realized that um, even if you look at the public sector, if you are talking about public sector in the country, we see more of pu public, uh, sorry, private rather, Businesses. private enterprises yes. in Lagos. 
So we can say there are um, you know, different uh, demography in Lagos, not just students, not just young people. It's a mixed society. And if you look at um, ethnic groups, you will see that Lagos is a free, ta is a free man's town. Oh, no man's land. So no man's <laughs> land. That's it. Lagos is a no man's land. So no, uh, you have different persons from different parts of the country uh, residing in Lagos, especially those that are into business. So, uh, and do we still remain with the south, the, the southwest, to also take a look at other states? I, I, I think there is one interesting, you, you know, when when we leave this and we we'll go to the geopolitical zones. Again, um, let, let's just look at something. Twenty twenty three, um, because if you look at south south, a state like Bayesa, Bayesa, Bayesa. State yeah. is is the least on yeah. the register, but um, it amazes when we now see that even the South South is way ahead of some other part of, 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 the, country. of, of, of the country. Yeah, like the North East and like the South Like the North East and the South East. So, and um, if we look at it, if we quickly have to move back to the state desegregation, and if we look at it here, Bayasa is About just a getting a million, above a, a million, million now. Uh, registered voters. But the interesting part is if you look River at states. rivers, and um, from 2019 to 2023, they increased. They've maintained that 3 million plus. Yes, 3 million. And they have, if you look at the increase, it's about um, uh, 200,000 plus yes. in increase. But there's something very important that we need to note. In Delta. Look at, look at Delta. Yes, that Delta, that Delta is moved the, the, very the movement fast. from 2019 to 2023 in Delta is about 500,000 plus in Delta State. Mm -hmm. so, so what that means is that the people in Delta State are saying, yes, the South-South region needs to move faster. And the Lagos, um, I mean, River State has been the hot state in the South-South. So as it stands now, these Delta people took, uh, took a decision to say, we will definitely run after no, our I, I think they're making, we'll a, I think they're making a statement that yeah, Rivers should, watch, their should back watch their back. Because if you coming. look at the movement, and of course, we can't also shy away or disconnect this from the, uh, you know, the uh, running mate of one of the uh, you know, okay, presidential candidates from, Delta from, states. from that too. So yes. that, this, this has, this, these are points for us to note. All right, let's go to other region. We've, gone, we've done that of uh, uh, Southwest. And uh, let's quickly go to other region uh, to see. Okay, South South. Then, yes, there's something about the regional um, number of registered voters. You see, there is a candidate in the Northwest, presidential yes. candidates. Yes. There's a candidate in uh, the, the South. Su the the Southwest. Yes. There's a candidate in the Northeast. Yeah, that, that is coming from. Oh yes. That, yes. That, that their that state of origin uh, is from is the from region. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's a presidential candidate also uh, in the southeast. Yes. So the two regions without presidential candidates, it's uh, the north central and the, the south south. 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 Okay. But, 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 but that of the south south, that of the south south, there is a vice presidential candidate in the south south. You know, when people start giving the analysis or uh, possibility of uh, this region coming up and also supporting their candidate. Yeah. But this election seems to be very different. Regions are not talking about their candidates again. They're talking about their interests. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about their interests. So now the battlefield, the battlefield, according to an analysis that I read from uh, uh, someone, I think Odin Kalu, and he said the battlefield has moved from, moved to the North Central and the South South. So the leaders of this two regions have a very key roles to play to determine who will clinch power in those uh, you regions. Know, now, um, Ijeoma, let me quickly, uh, you know, um, because there is, in terms of the violence tracking yes, that yes, we normally yes, do, yes, yes. Uh, there are a lot of indicators we also recently we've been looking at, which is w uh, political parties that are most visible in each of the regions. That's, why I'm, that's where we're coming from. And, and, and one key thing about the North Central is it's becoming extremely difficult you know, increasingly difficult to separate the visibility of some of the leading political parties. Okay. So it's invariably showing us that most of the political parties are going to the North Centre, which like the places like, like Plateau State, you know, places like um, um, Niger, Benue and the likes, most especially in Plateau State. They are going there to woo voters. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to let's go to Mr. Ken. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ken. Is it? Thank you. Uh, I'm sure you you understood our analysis so far. Of course. Uh, if yeah. you take a look at the register that was uh, released by INEC, I think on Wednesday they handed over the register to political, political parties. parties, and uh, you look at the figures. 
uh, regionally, geopolitical zones, uh, what would you say? For me, I, I think I, I can't agree less with uh, the analysis that uh, Kim Park Development Initiative has given. Uh, you know, but for me, my major concern has been how this will translate into votes, into voting. Um, because uh, we've seen that high turnout in registration, in voter registration, does not actually uh, guarantee the number of people that are going to vote. And so what it means to us, and that is why we are more concerned, the civil society are very much concerned about PVC collection and distribution. And that is why we are currently tracking, I believe so many other people are doing that, tracking, we've even launched a database to be able to receive progress reports on sports assessments to actually know what is happening. How are PVCs being distributed and collected as against what we are being told? And to tell you the fact, the, the, the reports, just like the one you had from your station, is not as encouraging as it should. Mm. Because just close here, in Karoluka, in um, a place like Orozo, Orozo. not even far, uh, you discover that there are a lot of things that is happening, like machadasi, racketing, racketing, is very unfortunate. That if you see the turnout of people at every place, which even INEC admitted as one of the reasons uh, why they are, they are extending the uh, collection for one week, one more week again, is because Nigeria has never been much awakened to their civic responsibility as now. I am of a view, a very firm and strong view that people are going to vote, are going to come out. The only fear we are having is that so that people will not be disenfranchised uh, due to PVCs if they are unable to collect their PVCs. And so this is what worries us more. How will all this, the 93.4 million additional 9 million plus from 84 to 93. Very wonderful, very good. What we want, we are more concerned, what we had expected, I think, now, is that each week, Nigeria should be told number of PVCs collected. Number of PVCs collected. I can do that. We should be able to track by now. The, among, from the number of PVCs that has been printed, distributed, and to states and wards and local government, how many of those PVC are as Saturday be collected by citizens? So that we know the remaining ones. Yes. That is remaining because people will not, Nigerians will not ask, you know, want to choose who become their leaders. They won't just at the end of the day. You just tell them that uh, those as Philip C. Uh, imagine some centers, you come out, the staffs are understaffed, the INEC in some places are understaffed. Some people come to a place like there was a place in Owere, in Aimo, rather, that uh, people came, they could not see any staff. And such thing, people were not going to pay for such administrative lapses. Whereas, of course, Mr. President, on several occasions, has told us, assured us that everything before now that INEC needs, we should be talking about INEC being overstaffed, not understaffed. We don't want to see any PVC left in the, in the uh, offices of INEC as at two days before election. So we are so much concerned about PVC's collection. For the distribution, of course, uh, we have seen, just like um, the analysis have said, the North Central and the South South are going to be determinants mm. of who is going to be the president. But that, that, that will also, that also uh, there's a determining factor to that too. It depends on the number of uh, PVCs collected from those regions. Yes, yes. And if at the end of the day, another region has the highest number of PVC collected. In, in but without PVC, you can't, you can't vote. Yes, yeah, yeah. You, okay. know, you, know, you know, one thing also we need to, uh, PVC not be collected, that's what we are saying, is not going to be restricted, should not be restricted, it's not going to be restricted rather to a particular zone. Okay. If that happens, we'll begin to question INEC. Okay. You get it? There is no reason why a region, one region should have access to collecting their PVC more than another region. It should be the same condition. Every Nigerian, every eligible voter should be able to get their PVC. No, Mr. Isi. And 
Besides, it, there's a possibility that the political class in some of these regions will mobilize their people, sensitize them to come out en masse, to collect their, their cards. Before now, we've seen people going to, to the INEC officials or uh, leaders taking INEC officials to, to the palace, calling on their people, using the traditional means of informing them to come collect their permanent voters' cards. So if a region is non-talent and the leaders, they don't care, what they're supposed to do now, political parties, they're supposed to be going from region to region, state to state, word to word, calling on their people to go get their permanent voters' cards because that is the only license for you. So you, can, you may not uh, need to even blame any, any region if they, if they don't come out to collect. No, no, I, think, I don't think in South-South or, or North Central they right. have this. In fact, I've heard a prominent person from North Central, Plateau. In fact, they are seeing that they are the most sought-after bride, as it is today, <laughs> that every politician, every um, candidate rather, are coming to seek for votes from them. Mm. And they're going to any extent to ensure that they even collect their PVC. So those regions are even aware. And we know in South South, we have the right presidential candidates of one political party yes. also from there. So the South South and the North Central, they are aware. They know that they are going to be determinants. While it is very likely that other zones, they're going to be, you know, people are going to share those votes, those candidates. Because we are kind of from southeast, we are from north uh, east, west. we are from northwest. Yes. No, we are from uh, northwest yeah. and also southwest. Yeah. So why those people are going to share votes? Then the, the feed left for them that is green is those two places. Those which are on south, 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 and, south and, and south and, uh, and uh, north, north central. central. And so they know this. What we are saying is that there are still pockets of there are certain things what we are seeing so i just cited here in fct in a car here oh, we are not even talking about places there are places even in lagos why today i was listening to the rec commissioner you know one thing you cannot you can you have never heard i neck or any person talked against nigerians is that there is no place that i neck official came out to give pvc and nobody was there no but there was a there was a particular video that went viral uh, where INEC officials came out and they were talking. Maybe that, nobody, was, at the that was at the beginning of the year. the first one, two days. Ye I'm yes. telling you nobody now, is coming from their as cards. we speak today, there is no place across the country. Mm. What INEC is even complaining of is the crowd. And they are begging them to have patience because you, these are people that leave their businesses, mm. leave whatever they're doing. And so if that happens, and you know, these are manual means. They have to source for your name, break out the card, you have to sign out. So all this thing takes time. Some persons comes and tells you that they can't even see their temporary uh, card, temporary sleep, which is the one they will exchange for the PVC. And so all these things are. So what we are saying is that what INEC is doing so much is very up to date. We want one to have to be getting updates. All right, thank we want you. Want to know number of PVC all right, so we'll distributed go. today okay. per geopolitical zone per state. Let's okay. have that. So we'll come back to to that uh, to also speak on that. Uh, I, I think we should just listen to uh, one or two persons, especially in that Orozo, if we, if we have it, uh, where they also talked about uh, PVC racketeering. If we have it, let's just see them briefly and we'll come back to the dashboard. I came in volunteered on my own. Let the police not say they are just monitors. You see things are happening and you just leave it as they are. One of them approached me when he saw me. He said, how many people do you have? I told him, I told him I have some staff here. He says, I will pay 1000 for them. I told him, don't worry. At least I established something. But by the time I went in, I discovered one is not an annex staff. We disguised ourselves and came here. And uh, with the help of some uh, retired brigadier generals and uh, some DSM. It's not being coordination from both ends. I just got mine this afternoon. So much you just heard from uh, Urozu, uh, where we saw uh, some military officials uh, disguise themselves to go to to collection centers, and at the end of the day, they found out that people were selling PVCs, that which is not too good. People were Racket selling. Yeah, when I mean selling, yeah. they are, you come for your PVC, they ask you to pay. <laughs> so PVC racketeering—that's what is going on now. Because they know that a lot of persons want to collect 
their permanent voters but, card. But that is that is pathetic and very um, very and um, really I, I think Heineck also um, needs to probe into this issue. No. Mm. And um, and um, if there are corporates, and I think it, they should they should be scapegoat being made of all of this. They have said that right. they released a statement yesterday. Oh yes, and they said they are looking into that. So let's go to um, the register again. Um, this time around, we are looking at uh, uh, the gender distribution. Yes, um, interesting <laughs> interesting <laughs> figure here, actually. <laughs> um, if you look at this, is what we uh, have um, as an egg release. That is about um, twelve. 12% um, increase, okay. but if you look at 44 million to 49, it's also less than 10. Okay. So it's also telling us that we have uh, more women or female coming out. In this 2023? In, in between 2019 to 2023 to register. Yeah. But um, what also confirmed this is that, uh, you know, Heineck usually released the data for CVR. Uh, you know, every week as of that time. And when they were done with um, the whole, um, I think, running habeas, where they removed the invalid registration and, and whole. Avis, yes. Avis, yeah, yes. thank you. When they removed that, we discovered that um, of the 9.5 million new, um, the, the registration that they added to the register, which is 84 million of 2019. Yes. Female makeup 50.2 percent. So that means we also that so we have more women coming out to register between in this in, yes this sequence of CVR process than um, the previous year. So that is what we have. So it's also telling us that um, the male folks <laughs> they also watch their back. they need to wash their back because, because the, the women are coming <laughs> they are coming and, so and, hard and, and really yes. they, uh, we also cannot share away from the fact that the women are faithful voters. They are. Because um, one key thing for us to note, like we've been talking about, is these are registered voters, not PVC collected. Uh, but as much as, as it is, um, this figure is 49.2% um, of the total, uh, which is close to the 52 or 52.3, um, mm. thereabout percent of the male. But however, um, I just hope that when we get to PVC collection, we don't have more women collecting, collecting PVC. PVCs. <laughs> so, so, so please, let's go to, uh, because of time, let's go to age distribution. Okay, uh, yes, the so, youths. So I I interesting one here too. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at the, the youth to the middle age, uh, for the young people, we have 37 million. It's obvious that then we have the middle age, 33 million. And there is really like uh, there is no much difference between the youth and the, between middle, the, youth age. And the middle age in terms of you know the numbers uh, we've been having conversation or the school of thought generally mm -hmm. has been the fact that there are young people came out for registration which was all over we saw clips we saw videos and a whole lot but what was what is surprising is that if you compare to 2019 there is, is a reduction no, so no. 2019 is it's higher. higher. Then 2023, there is a reduction. So if that is the case, uh, what would you say is responsible for that? Because in 2019, 18 to 34, is about 42 million Nigerians that came out to vote. Oh. And these 42 million, they have their permanent voters card already. But yes. some of them have collected it. Yes, the they, 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 some they, of them. They, they voted in 2019. Well, I, I also don't think that, uh, because one will literally think maybe some of the young people between that age bracket migrated to middle age. No, you one don't. Will literally no, think, you will not say migration. <laughs> because this is just for 2019. Yes, because just for 2019. I, I don't think INEC will keep increasing the figures by like increasing the age and of I, individuals. I, I INEC, INEC, INEC will not use your age that you have crossed. You've crossed because I, 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 I they think, I think the old system is static. Yes. When you register, that is the age it captured. Yeah, exactly. So and um, so what could uh, well really what could have happened there? Uh, because we, we uh, for us at Kimpact we did a bit of um, uh, you know going to this collection center, peer, you know, at the ward level and also at the local government. We also did interview some young people and um, ask questions. I, I think there are a few things. Number one is. Um, some during the first week, they did say that they went for their PVC collection, but it seems that they were told to come back after two weeks. Okay. Right. No, they but were for told, now, they were told to come not out. Not now. That. Yes, yes, not now. Not That's now. when it started. But but now, away from that, actually, most of them now that are saying they are, want to collect their PVC, there are a, a lot of issues around double registration. That's why. That's why when they go to say they want to collect their PVCs and their names are not on the register. Then that that's not take, takes us back to when I next said they had to do cleaning up. They came out with uh, 
uh, proofs and uh, what they call is again they released the names yeah. for people to come out and then see if somebody is still alive or not alive. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, so but, the, but I think the, one thing um, one thing we need to note, um, Ijoma, is the fact that you know that. Um, during registration, Heineck, like we did, uh, you know, mentioned the other time, did took out some invalid registration. Exactly. Then there is a need for us to break down that figure. Do we have more young people? Because these are possibilities. Really. Okay, but, but you know, if you're talking about young people, you go to the students uh, because they, they, they you know, there's, a, there's something very funny about the number of students yes. in the register. Yes. Go to the students. Um, okay, yeah. I, I think let's let's do that. Occupational. Yes. yes. Um, so this is 2023. Exactly. We have more students. Students. Uh, in the register. Yes. But we they collect their permanent voter cards? This, these are conversations. Because some of them some of them registered in school. Yes, these are conversations. No, some during <laughs> the registration, most of them were at home. Were at home. Uh, okay, they were at home. That because there was there was learning. industrial action by Hasu. Okay. Right? Okay. So most of them were at home, but now they've resumed. And they are in school. Okay, let, let's find out from <laughs> Kenneth because I'm, we've I'm coming to that point. And that yes. is why I'm really calling on INEC. How do we save Nigerian students so that their efforts will not be in vain? While this way, the CVR was going on, they were at home. For the and they registered action. at home. Now, as I speak to they are all back to school. So how do they collect the their school? permanent voters? So that is why I am really, that is the point INEC need to factor out, find a solution. How do they reach to these ones? To these people because they can't leave their school they can't leave their exams some people are writing exams, some are writing lecture having lecture so how will they collect this so it doesn't translate this to the six million we don't want to waste it exactly. and it's going to pain them because there's no way they're going to vote that is why there are different different interpretations people are saying at the end of the day if it is going to be because of the students even if they can be allowed with their temporary um this thing to, to, to vote that. but they can't because there's a law, no, Section 47, no. that said it. Of you have to come that, with a that permanent voter's card. That, <laughs> that Section 47.1 yes. talks about voter's card. Okay. Voter's card, if there is no specific, any specification okay. on permanent voter's card, if you can show it. He said, the means of accreditation yeah. is, there, is, is, there is voter's on, card. Is there specification on temporary voter's card? Now, voter's card yes. and this comprises both temporary and permanent. Mr. Ken. If you're not going to use the PVC, and you know that we are, we are the, the INEC is deploying the B, uh, BVAS, yeah. the Biomodal Accreditation uh, System, system. system. Uh, and it is only the PVC that the BVAS can read. No, no. not the B temporary B B BVAS, BVAS. Yes. Accredited. There are three ways of accreditation. One is showing your PVC. Two is fingerprint. Okay. Three, three is, is facial rec recognition. So the fact that it is even biometric, okay, makes it very easy. So. It is not your PVC. But have you, seen, going have, to you, be have, you read, have you read to do anything. that section uh, uh, 47.2? Yeah. Yes. 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 Technology. So if you are bringing a temp temporary card, you don't so need I, to. I, I, no, I think where the permanent the PVC, card, I, I think, for, where, I think where the PVC for, comes handy yeah. yes. is for us to also talk about um, which uh, biometrics would, would do exactly but before you get to the point where you use biometrics then you have to still go to the process where you, you will know um, your name where your name is, is uh, you is know there. Is, is there or not, or and not. a whole lot so um but i think in in, in in adding to to this yeah. uh, we also need to look at the economic cost if eventually this set of individuals are unable to get to their, their PVC, PVC. Um, and you can't collect PVCs by proxy, you can collect it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, because um, a, a lot of effort has gone into printing, yes. a lot of effort will also go eventually into printing ballot papers. You know, for for such demography, yes. such huge numbers. So if they are unable to collect their PVC, that means that we are heading to an economic waste in that regard. Exactly. You know, so well, uh, the PVCs will still be with INEC. Only that well, it, I, may I, I, be, it may be impossible for them to participate. The issue is not even the economy way. It is to disenfranchise Nigerians. Nigeria. On it was it their cause that there was industrial action? They were, it was not their fault. This is a well, self well, you see, you, 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 know, you know, that is that is a challenge. But INEC, INEC will have to uh, think think again we are looking to see that. how we they can they can reach out to these students who registered at home. And they are still in school this period of collection of um, 
permanent voter scan. But some of them went for the Christmas and New Year holidays. So probably during the holidays. How many days? No, even if it's two days. Mm. And they started distribution of permanent voter was, scan. Was preference given then. to students in <laughs> collection? It All right, uh, gentlemen, no, you no see, preference. time time is not our friend. Yeah. And uh, uh, we want to say a big thank you because uh, our time is already gone. Olua Femi Adebayo, I know you have more to tell us. There's a lot to talk a about. A lot to yeah. talk about. <laughs> but next time when we come, we'll start from where we stop. Probably we'll be looking at the collection of permanent voters. That's right. That's, that's right. A, that's a very good one. <laughs> now, thank you so much, Mr. Kenneth Eze. We appreciate it. Kenneth Eze is uh, the executive director of uh, Speak Out Africa Initiative. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank we'll be you. having you next time. Yes, this is the much we can take on the program. Uh, time will not permit us to go to uh, social media, to, especially our Twitter handle, to get to take some of your messages, and I have a lot of them here, on reactions to uh, the register as it stands. But we'll still be looking at this. We're still going to come up with another election data dashboard before the election, about 42, uh, 43, 42 days to... Uh, the presidential and national assembly election. That's the much we can take on the program. Thank you so much for being a part of this and to uh, the production crew. Thank you so much. Until we return tomorrow, 10 p.m., keep a date with us. We'll still be talking uh, election. Probably we'll look at uh, the number of young Nigerians that registered to vote. I am Ijeoma Osamo. Follow me at EJ Osamo on my Twitter handle. Good night. <laughs>